eye tracking. A feature that the latest top-notch VR headsets like the Pimax Crystal have to offer. And to be fair, I expect all future headsets to get this. In quite a lot of PC VR games, eye tracking with dynamic foveated rendering can provide quite the performance boost. But first, what is this? It's simple, dynamic foveated rendering optimizes computing power for better device performance by fully rendering only what is in the view, as you can see in this example. But let's take a quick look at the performance boost I gained playing some of my favorite games. Games. First, Elite Dangerous without eye tracking. Here the FPS is in the high 70s, 80s as you can see over here. And with eye tracking, I stay at a stable 90 FPS. So here we can already see quite the performance boost. In the hangar, we can also see quite the FPS boost. With foveated eye rendering, we sometimes even get more than 10 FPS. And that with the maximum resolution is absolutely amazing. Fantastic results. I am super happy with them. In space, both hit a stable 90 FPS. But these things change once we enter a planet. And here we are trying to land on a planet and just look on the right side how beautiful Elite Dangerous can be at times. And here the gains are a little bit minor but the closer we go to the ground the better the FPS gets with the eye tracking with the foveated eye rendering enabled. And if you are curious on what system I run these games just look in the description below the video. In DCS it's all the same. With dynamic foveated rendering you gain a massive FPS boost. It might look a little bit blurry on the right side but that's because it's only sharp to where I am looking at and as you can see over here like sometimes it's just what is it 30 FPS more if I enable a dynamic foveated re rendering with the Pimax Crystal. Absolutely fantastic results. Something that you can clearly notice in the headset as well. Here another scene on the carrier deck with the F-14. The F-14 is quite a heavy performance module I would say but still super happy with the results here as you can see with the eye tracking foveated eye rendering we gain a massive FPS boost. The settings in DCS I use are medium to high just so you know. And of course, we cannot forget to include Flight Simulator 2020 here, flying over Manhattan without foveated rendering, an FPS of 35. Let's enable foveated rendering and there we go, we gain 10 FPS. And that's quite a lot for a Microsoft Flight Simulator here. Super happy with that. So here flying over Manhattan again, 45 FPS. Now we have enabled foveated rendering kind of looks blurry maybe on the outsides as you can see so that's uh, foveated rendering doing its work here looking at the dashboard in the middle uh, which turn which is very sharp for me here 52 FPS even it's quite uh, remarkable let's turn it off again and see um, what will happen 52 FPS that's the latest foveated rendering off and that would make it 40 yeah so that's like an exact 10 FPS we gain a 10 FPS with foveated rendering and we lose 10 FPS if we disable that. So yeah, now you can see why I want dynamic foveated rendering or eye tracking in any VR headset in the future. The performance gains are absolutely amazing. I'm trying here a little bit of a, a tricky thing here as we are ending the video. But what do you think of this feature? What do you think of it? Uh, super happy with it. Um, this is only included of what I know in the PSVR 2 headset. The Pimax Crystal, which I am using right here. You can buy it in the link in the description. Or in the Vio Aero. Um, I, never, I can never pronounce that headset. Vi Vio Aero? Vio Aero? Wh whatever. Um, I'm crashing here. I will be waiting for the police to pick me up. And uh, yeah, again, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this feature and what it will bring in the future. And uh, if you want to keep up to date with the latest VR updates, then subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.